This is an educational podcast or educast created by Jim House, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Communication Arts Technology at Allegheny College of Maryland. For more information about Allegheny College of Maryland, please visit us on the web at allegheny.edu. Understanding what makes a computer tick can come in handy in today's information age. It helps you decipher computer ads, troubleshoot equipment problems, and make software work. Although scientists are tinkering with exotic technologies such as quantum computers and molecular computers, just about every computer today is an electronic digital device based on a concept that's as simple as a basic light switch. People use computers to work with many kinds of data including numbers, text, music, photos, and videos. Data representation is the process of transforming these diverse data into a form that computers can use for processing. Today, computers typically represent data digitally. Most computers are digital devices. A digital device works with discrete, distinct, and separate data such as digits. For example, 1 and 0. In contrast, an analog device works with continuous data. As an analogy, a traditional light switch has two discrete states, on and off, so that would be considered a digital device. A dimmer switch, on the other hand, has a rotating dial that controls a continuous range of brightness. It is, therefore, an analog device. Most computers use the simplest type of digital technology. Their circuits only have two possible states. For convenience, let's say that one of those states is on and the other state is off. When discussing these states, we usually indicate the on state with a 1 and the off state with a 0. So the sequence, for example, of on, on, off, off would be written 1, 1, 0, 0. These ones and zeros are referred to as binary digits. It is from this term that we get the word bit, binary digit. Computers use sequences of bits to digitally represent numbers, letters, punctuation marks, music, pictures, and videos. Numeric data consists of numbers that might be used in arithmetic operations. For example, your annual income is numeric data, as is your age. The price of a bicycle is numeric data. So is the average gas mileage for a vehicle such as a car or an SUV. Computers represent numeric data using the binary number system, also called base 2. The binary number system only has two digits, 0 and 1. No numeral like 2 exists in this system, so the number 2 is represented in binary as 1, 0. You'll recognize the similarity to what happens when you're counting from 1 to 10 in the familiar decimal system. After you reach 9, you run out of digits. For 10, you have to use the 1, 0. 0 is a placeholder for the 1 indicates one group of 10s. In binary, you just run out of digits sooner, right after you count to 1. To get the next number, you have to use the 0 as a placeholder, and the 1 indicates one group of 2s. In binary, then, you count 0, 1, or 1, 0, instead of counting 0, 1, 2 in decimal. The important point to understand is that the binary number system allows computers to represent virtually any number simply by using zeros and 1s, which conveniently translate into electrical on and off signals. Character data is composed of letters, symbols, and numerals that are not used in arithmetic operations. Examples of character data include your name, address, and hair color. Just as Morse code uses dashes and dots to represent the letters in the alphabet, a digital computer uses a series of bits to represent letters, characters, and numerals. Computers employ several types of codes to represent character data, including ASCII, IBCDIC, and Unicode. ASCII, which stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and pronounced ASCII, requires only 7 bits for each character. For example, the ASCII code for an uppercase A is 1000001. ASCII provides codes for 128 characters including uppercase letters, lowercase letters, punctuation symbols, and numerals. A superset of ASCII called extended ASCII uses 8 bits to represent each character. For example, extended ASCII represents the letter A as 01000001. Using 8 bits instead of 7 allows extended ASCII to provide codes for 128 more characters than just plain ASCII. The additional extended ASCII characters include boxes, circles, and other graphical symbols. An alternative to the 8-bit extended ASCII code called IBCDIC, which refers to Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code, is usually used by only older IBM mainframe computers. Unicode uses 16 bits and provides codes for over 65,000 characters a real bonus for representing the alphabets of multiple languages. Music and pictures are not small discrete objects like numbers and letters of the alphabet. 
To work with music and pictures, they must be digitized. The term digitized means to convert the raw analog data into digital format represented by zeros and ones. A photograph or drawing can be digitized by treating it as a series of colored dots. Each dot is assigned a binary number according to its color. For example, a green dot might be represented by 0010 and a red dot by 1100. A digital image is simply a list of color numbers for the dots that it contains. In a similar way, music can be digitized by assigning binary codes to notes. To avoid confusion, most computer files contain a file header with information on code used to represent the file data. A file header is stored along with the file and can be read by the computer but never appears on the screen. By reading the header information, a computer can tell how a file's content was coded. Computer ads include lots of abbreviations relating to bits and bytes. A few key concepts can help you understand what these abbreviations mean. Even though the word bit is an abbreviation for binary digit, it can be further abbreviated using a lowercase b. A byte, on the other hand, is composed of 8 bits and is usually abbreviated with an uppercase b. When working with computers, you'll frequently encounter references such as 50 kilobits per second, 1.44 megabytes, and 2.8 gigahertz. Kilo, mega, giga, and similar terms are used to quantify computer data. In common usage, kilo, abbreviated as a capital K, means 1,000. For example, 50K means 50,000. In the decimal number system we use on a daily basis, the number 1,000 can be represented as 10 to the third power. In the world of computers where base 2 is the norm, a kilo is precisely 1,024 or 2 to the tenth power. A kilobit, abbreviated as a capital K and a lowercase b, or a capital case K and the word bit, is 1,024 bits. A kilobyte, abbreviated as a capital K and a capital B, or sometimes known as a kilobyte, are often used in referring to the size of small computer files. The prefix mega means a million, or in its context of bits and bytes, precisely 1,048,576, the equivalent of 2 to the 20th power. A megabit, which is a capital M and a lowercase b, or a megabyte, which is a uppercase M and an uppercase b. Megabytes are often used when referring to the size of medium to large computer files on a floppy disk capacity. In computer lingo, the prefix giga refers to a billion, or precisely 1,073,741,824. Computers, especially mainframes and supercomputers, sometimes work with huge numbers of data, and so the terms such as tera for trillion, peta for a thousand trillion, and exa for quintillion are also handy. Because most computers are electronic devices, bits take the form of electrical pulses that can travel over circuits. In much the same way, electricity flows over a wire when you turn on a light switch. All the circuits, chips, and mechanical components that form a computer are designed to work with bits. Most of these essential components are housed within the computer's system unit. If it weren't for the miniaturization made possible by digital electronic technology, computers would be huge, and inside of the computer system unit would contain a complex jumble of wires and other electronic gizmos. Instead, today's computers contain relatively few parts. Desktop computers with large system units are designed so that owners can easily upgrade audio, visual, and storage components. Small desktop and notebook computers, on the other hand, usually provide access for expansion and replacement from outside of the case. The terms computer chip, microchip, and chip originated as technical jargon for integrated circuit. An integrated circuit, or IC, is a super thin slice of semiconducting material packed with microscopic circuit elements such as wires, transistors, capacitors, logic gates, and resistors. The assortment of chips inside a computer includes the microprocessor, memory modules, and support circuitry. These chips are packaged in a protective carrier that also provides connectors to other computer components. Chip carriers vary in shape and size including small rectangular dips or dual inline package with caterpillar like legs protruding from the back rectangular body. Long slim dims or dual inline memory modules, pin cushion like PGAs, pin grid arrays and cassette like SEC cartridges, single edge contact cartridges. Terms like dim and PGA frequently appear in computer ads. The computer's main circuit board is called the system board, or motherboard, or main board. This houses all the essential chips and provides connecting circuitry between them. This has been an Educast podcast brought to you by Jim House and Allegheny College of Maryland.